the Supreme Court's arguments on Prop 8 and the Defense of Marriage Act, President Obama announced on Friday that his administration had officially asked the Supreme Court to legalize gay marriage in California. I felt it was important for us to articulate what I believe uh, and what this administration stands for. And what we've said is, is that uh, same-sex couples uh, are a group, a class, that deserves heightened scrutiny, that uh, the Supreme Court needs to ask the state why it's doing it, and if the state doesn't have a good reason, it should be struck down. It marks a full evolution on the issue since President Obama first took office in 2009, 2008, 2009. Have Republicans evolved at the same rate? George W. Bush won re-election in 2004 while supporting a constitutional amendment banning gay marriage. That year, voters in 11 states passed laws prohibiting gay unions. Now, Bush's campaign manager, Ken Melman, who came out in 2010, is leading the effort for marriage equality on the right. In a friend of the court brief, Melman and 130 other conservatives advised the court to strike down Prop 8. Among the signatories, Clint Eastwood, seven former governors, several Bush administration officials, and top advisors to Mitt Romney. Marriage equality is a conservative cause, wrote the newly emboldened John Huntsman, freed from the shackles of the 2012 campaign. Another signatory, McCain campaign manager Steve Schmidt, was more blunt. It's difficult to make the case to go work for a political party that wants to discriminate against their friend who happens to be gay. Are these 131 Republicans representative of a wider shift in the GOP? Maybe, not so much, maybe. Last week also saw GO, Go Proud left off the list of invitees for this year's CPAC conference. And despite the heavy hitters on Melman's list, only two are current office holders. Florida Representative Ileana ross Letnin and New York Congressman Richard, Richard Hanna. That led the Washington Post's Aaron Blake to suggest that while significant, the movement within the GOP may be less than meets the eye. Quote, the fact is that any Republican office holder who supports gay marriage is basically begging for a primary challenge, and that's why very few have. Nicole, you are very involved in this effort, and we commend and applaud you for it, because I think it is absolutely the right thing to do, and it's great to see conservatives come out for this. But the question is, I mean, as Aaron Blake points out, there are not a lot of office holders on that list. Is this still a, a kryptonite for for? parts of the, the Republican Party? I don't think so. I don't think this is a political third rail at all. And I think that what's more significant than people like me signing this letter with this, this friend, of the brief, friend, friend of the court brief that 130 of us signed last week, people like Steve Hadley, who was President Bush's National Security Advisor, and James Comey, who was the uh, Deputy Attorney General, is that the legal, the Republican legal establishment has now put forth, and, and, and Ted Olson, who was President Bush's Solicitor General, has put forth a, a legal argument that is so sound, I, I really can't see how, how you would argue the other side, that, that the, the Constitution guarantees equal protection and that to deny any class of people the right to marry you know, is, is unconstitutional and won't pass constitutional and, muster. And I think, too, to Huntsman's point, I mean, this is where conservatism really makes well, sense. Well, exactly, right? right? See, the, the government out of our backyard would be, would be that if you believe and revere marriage as this fundamental building block of society, and that is a, a, a very conservative principle, then you would want families, you would want couples with children to be in a marriage, and you believe that families make up neighborhoods and neighborhoods make up communities and communities make up our society. So you can also make a very a very compelling conservative moral case right. for gay marriage being the law of the land. I will say though, Ben, the Washington Post and ABC News took a poll and asked Republicans about gay marriage. 54% strongly opposed it, 12% somewhat opposed it, 16% strongly supported, and 15% somewhat supported. Now, yeah. We played tape of the president and his, you know, he has come a long way on this issue. And in fact, the uh, amicus, uh, the friend of the court brief that Nicole talks about, actually has more strongly worded support for gay marriage than the president's actual, uh, you know, what the DOJ sent over to the court. But at the end of the day, you know, will and can the party evolve quickly enough to win over parts of the country that it is not won, which is to say gay Americans, which overwhelmingly voted for the president in the last election? Yeah, and, and the two representatives who, who signed on represent South Florida and I think a part of New York City. So, I, we, you know, we're not, we're not talking about the uh, conversion in the heartland. I think that what's really happening is that there has not been a kind of third way that moderate Republicans have been able to build over time to say, you know, we're a little bit uncomfortable with, with gay 
marriage, but we believe very much in the dignity of these people and, and you know, their rights, and we're going to find a way to support it. I think that that's both a political failure and it's also a legal and intellectual failure. In the aftermath of Prop 8, I was doing some reporting on gay marriage uh, court cases. And when you read the court cases state by state, that uh, found against gay marriage, the logic that they relied on was deeply, deeply tortured. You know, they were pointing to these discredited studies that claimed that gay marriage in Europe had undermined the family there. There just wasn't a, a middle road that people could rely on, and I think that you could see that early on in the legal cases, but it's become more evident sort of politically. Um, I also think, <coughs> Joy, we've talked about um, the rebranding in the party and the fact that, you know, you have Eric Kanner out there. We played footage of him in Selma. Which is honestly, I mean, look, Eric Kanner, I think, has gotten uh, painted as a very specific type of politician. He has made a lot of attempts in recent weeks to say that the uh, GOP is much more welcoming, to uh, have more sort of outreach to minorities, to, you know, uh, uh, put a message out there that Republicans are not just the party of rich people. Ryan Lizza has a very interesting and compelling profile of Kanner. Uh, from last week, and I'll read a quick excerpt from it. He writes, since the 2012 elections, the Republicans have been divided between those who believe their policies are the problem and those who believe they just need better marketing, between those who believe they need to make better pizza and those who just think they need a more attractive box. Eric Kanner, who is known among his colleagues as someone with strategic intelligence and a knack for political positioning, argues that it's the box. Yeah, and I think Eric Kanter represents probably, I don't want to speak for the Republican Party, but, I, but most of those um, who are the political sort of wranglers in the party, to me, seem to have been saying it's the box. And Eric Kanter is in Virginia, a state that is going in the blue direction of purple. Um, and so I think on issues like gay marriage and immigration, I think it's very similar. It's the people who need to figure out how to win elections, saying we need to change the way we talk to people. We need to change the way we sound. But the base of the party, look, on gay marriage, the evangelical Christian base of the party is still very large. They're still very much relied upon to win elections. And they're very potent in primaries. So it's fine for people in Washington or in Virginia to say we need a better look on gay marriage, but how is the base, the, the evangelical base of the party, going to react to it? I think with immigration, you've already seen that people won't necessarily follow just because it's better for the party politically. Well, let me weigh in on the pizza. I mean, I think there, there are a lot of people in the party who are hard at work. You know, we're not even sure it's pizza people want. You know, maybe it's pasta, maybe it's Chinese. You know, you know, people maybe, maybe we're pizza. serving the wrong dish <laughs> altogether. So that's so, true. So there may be some people working on the box, but there are, are a whole bunch of people working on the main course, and that is because good politics are usually born out of good policies, and there is a recognition that we need a, a base of policies that appeal to a broader swath of America. So I, I don't think that, that our entire party is in denial working on a, a prettier box. I don't think that. I, 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 no, so I, I think I, there I is mean, a, the pizza versus fair. box, box argument, which basically is, I mean, Kathleen Parker had an op-ed a couple weeks ago saying, let the rhinos come trample the ground. I mean, for too long there has been a disproportionate amount of power handed to you know, the base that Joy talks about. And, that they're, they're, and if they were big enough to win elections, we'd be president and we could win. Right. And so, so and, all and the fear that people seem but to have. But you are still big enough to win primaries, though. This is the, I mean, you saw this with the Chick-fil-A protests last year. I mean, that was not nothing. That was actually very motivating for the base. I mean, it's, it's you know. It's as, convenient as, as, as we talk about pizza to talk about chick Yes, I, I'm off doing only food. But, you know, look, I mean, one of the things we saw in the last cycle, um, you saw this here in the, the legislative uh, battle for gay marriage in New York. You had um, Mike Bloomberg and Paul Singer and other uh, major funders. Paul Singer is very Republican. Mike Bloomberg obviously is not. Um, they provided cover to Republicans who had uh, uh, voted in favor of gay marriage. Even in New York, which is obviously pretty blue, a bunch of Republicans who were up in the Senate lost their primaries because of it. Those who, at least, at least two, I think it might have been three, lost their primaries. So it is still a motivating factor. I think that Ben is right that there is still not sort of that that alternate. That, that third, that third, that third chance, right? I mean, I don't know how. You know what I'm saying? How, <laughs> well, how has the, how has your work as as a signatory been greeted? Um, in, inside Republican circles that you frequent. Well, I mean, nobody signed this to, to get a medal or a, a you know a, a prize in the blue plate competition. I mean, we signed it because we believe in this, and we signed it because as conservatives, we were convinced that the legal argument put forth by David Boyce, made famous um, in a lot of ways, but one representing Al Gore and, and Ted Olson, a very well-respected conservative legal mind, was the most sound legal argument. So. Um, 
you know i've heard a little bit of consternation